It's the beginning of October and I get to review a horror movie today. Oh, I'm such a lucky guy. I wonder which one I'll get to review. Doesn't matter. Nothing can ruin this day. Nothing. Hey, hun, can you do me a favor? Can you check what movie I'm supposed to review today? Oh, yeah. Uh. Oh, no. Oh, no? Oh, no. Oh, don't tell me. Yeah, you've been putting it off, but it's finally time to review Cannibal Ferox. You know, as well as I do, that the only reason you're not in hell is because of the deal you made with the Necronomicon. No. No. It lied to me. The powers of darkness betrayed me? Yeah. You remember that you played with the forces of evil to gain a subscriber, and then the Necronomicon came to claim your soul, and you bargained with it. You told it that you would review every single horror movie from 1981 in order to keep your soul. But no, no, no. You waited until the absolute deadline to review this horror movie, and now it's here coming for your soul. Yeah, but I don't want to watch this movie. Do you want your soul to be torn apart by Cenobites and Deadites? No. I'll hold the Necronomicon off for a few minutes while you go review this movie. Deal. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Go. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna kick your butt. If you know me, then it comes as no surprise that I don't like certain kind of horror films. I don't like when movies have rape or animal cruelty being major factors in its story. And from what I heard, Cannibal Ferox has both. To be fair, most of the Italian cannibal films tend to have both of these key characteristics. Maybe that's why I never really watched any of those films. The reputation that they have is more than enough for me to get an understanding that these films probably aren't for me. Everyone has lines that they don't want to cross, and animal cruelty and rape for the sake of rape are my lines. Hey, can you review the film? Right, right. A cannibal ferox wasn't the first of its kind, and in many ways it's compared to its big brother, Cannibal Holocaust, from the previous year, 1980. But even Cannibal Holocaust wasn't the first Italian cannibal film. The trend really became popular in the 70s, 1972 Man from Deep River is credited as the first cannibal genre film that kickstarted the decade and a half trend. Actually, if we go way back, cannibals in films existed well before the subgenre even started. We can really thank the early black and white Tarzan films from the 30s through the 40s. Some of these films included primitives and alleged cannibals. Did you know that actor Johnny Weismuller played Tarzan in 12 films? He was also a competitive swimmer and won five Olympic gold medals. He was the first person in the history of the sport to break the minute mark in the 100 meter freestyle. Hey, are you reviewing the film yet? Uh... I can't hold back the Necronomicon much longer. Yeah, uh, okay, um, 
Cannibal Ferox was directed by Umberto Lenzi, who was a pretty famous cult director known for his Italian horror films. He was a major factor for early Jolly with Seven Bloodstained Orchids, So Sweet So Perverse, and A Quiet Place to Kill. He also created the cannibal subgenre with Man from Deep River, also known as Sacrifice. He was super influential in the cannibal subgenre with other hits like Eaten Alive and Cannibal Ferox. Later in his career, he made some other horror films which you may have heard of, such as Ghost House, Nightmare Beach, and Hitcher in the Dark, which got the Vinegar Syndrome treatment. I never realized how prolific of a career he actually had. Are you reviewing the film yet? No. Well, can you please start? Right. I guess it's time I finally have to watch you. <sighs> well, the film starts with a text bar. The following feature is one of the most violent films ever made. There are at least two dozen scenes of barbaric torture and sadistic cruelty graphically shown. If the presentation of disgusting and repulsive subject matter upsets you, please do not view this film. Well, that would upset me. So if the movie's telling me to turn it off, <laughs> I guess I gotta turn it off. Are you kidding me? You better be reviewing this film. <laughs> if you don't review this film right now, Let's power through the plot. I will try to be as objective as possible, but I'm pretty sure my bias will show. Anyway, so the main characters of the film travel to the Amazon rainforest to try to confirm that cannibalism isn't real and was only a fabricated lie by the early settlers. While in the rainforest, they run into drug dealers that were attacked by none other than cannibals. Go figure. And guess what? The drug dealers turn out to be some pretty shady people. I could have told you that. Drugs are bad for you. With all that cocaine he was on, Mike went completely crazy. Turns out that the native people the drug dealers met with weren't actually cannibals at all, but instead the drug dealers were the real villains. Mike gets hopped up on coke and castrates one of the native people and then flees. Now the natives put a curse on the whole gang and want them all dead. In their death rituals, the natives eat the cursed people. And that's it for plot. The story itself is fine. Again, I haven't seen any other cannibal films, so I can't really compare and contrast. The running theme of civilized man being the true villain could be interesting commentary, and the theme of violence breeds violence is spot on. It's hard to take the latter seriously when the film's message gets lost in the fact that it injured real life animals. Time to address the elephant in the room. What's up, Larry? Animal cruelty is disgusting. You can tell that a lot of the natural animal attacks on other animals is all staged. I understand, nature is one thing and I have zero problems with nature documentaries and all of that but it's terrible when you know it's all staged and the animals are only attacking because they feel threatened or are starved. Like at one point they literally cut off the limbs of a turtle while it's still alive. It's really sick stuff and adds zero quality to the film. The animal cruelty is the worst part of this film and if it were taken out, I doubt I would hate this movie as much as I do. The rest is watchable. Not necessarily engaging, but most exploitation films aren't. They are trying to push the limits of cinema rights and see what they can get away with. It's not about the art of it, but rather the freedom of it. Plus, that stuff sells. People are perverse like that. Acting is pretty bad. Script is exploitative for the sake of being exploitative. Some shots are well composed and locations and settings are all fine. Music fits appropriately. Gore that isn't real life gore is pretty good and effective. They went with some shocking things and for the most part, it succeeds. All in all, I don't recommend this film, but also know that I'm not the target audience. I understand that my opinion is swayed by my own bias and that some people may be able to look past the animal cruelty. I cannot. <sighs> the Necronomicon stopped. Did you finish the review? Yeah. 
It's finally over. I hope you die slowly. Thank you.